Hello, I'm Mike Gibbons. I'd like to welcome you to this Caldwell Heritage Museum's walking tour of Lenore. Uh, I'm going to cover the properties along what was once called North and South Main Street, now simply called Main Street Northwest. It will be impossible for us to cover the entire town at this time, but if there is interest for a second tour, it can be arranged and, and we can do that at another time. Uh, it will also be impossible for me to cover the entire history of all of these buildings that we're going to see. There's so much detail that, that other stores, businesses that were in here, each of these buildings could have its own history and take maybe hours to cover each individual building. So we'll only be covering the, this thing uh, very, very hurriedly as we, we go up and down the street. Now, this, this is for the benefit of the Caldwell Heritage Museum. Uh, all of the money that we're raising goes to benefit the museum, and we do appreciate your interest in this. So please be generous with the museum as we go along. Before we begin our tour, I'd like to give you some background information about Caldwell County and Lenore, the county seat. Both were created by the North Carolina General Assembly in January of 1841 by taking portions of Burke and Wilkes counties, with Burke giving up the larger portion of the new county. All of present-day Lenore lies within what was once Burke County. To understand which portion of Caldwell came from Burke and which from Wilkes, we need to look at, the two, at two rivers the Catawba and the Yadkin. Any rainwater that fell that would eventually run into the Catawba was part of Burke County. And likewise, any water that would flow into the Yadkin was part of Wilkes County. Present-day U.S. Highway 321, starting at the Green Park Hotel in Blowing Rock and running down to just north of Blue Ridge Electric, then turning eastward toward Wilkesboro, would be a good dividing line separating what was Burke and what is, was Wilkes County. Lenore was named by the General Assembly in honor of General William Lenore, who died in 1839. The new Court of Pleas and Quarter Sessions, the governing body of Caldwell at its formation, met at George Powell's storehouse to organize the new county. The body appointed a committee to find a site for the new county seat. Several sites were discussed. Eventually, a portion of James Harper's Fairfield Plantation was chosen. Mr. Harper gave the majority of the land that became Lenore. We are standing today where on June 2, 1841, an auction was held to sell the 48 town lots that made up Lenore. The lots had been surveyed and platted by James C. Harper the nephew of James Harper of Fairfield. The town extended approximately one half mile in each direction from the town square, with the four streets surrounding the town being designated as boundary streets, north, south, east, and west. Today, only West Boundary Street goes by that name, and it's simply called Boundary Street. South Boundary Street is today College Avenue. North Boundary is called Kirkwood. East Boundary was never built at the proposed location, but Ridge Street was built some 20 feet away from where it was originally designated. There were four main streets named, North, South, East, and West, extending from the square. Now they simply go by the name Main Street and West Avenue. Today's Harper Avenue was named Spring Street. Mulberry Street was the main road into town. All 48 lots were sold at the auction, giving the new county the funds needed to build a new courthouse, a jail, and to pay the county officials. On this site, a temporary log courthouse was built. It was torn down as soon as the new brick courthouse was finished. 
The logs may have been used to build other buildings around the square. Just to my left stood an old oak tree that was called the Charter Oak. It was once the site of many political debates. During the latter part of 1841 and early 1842, a new brick courthouse was erected in the center of town. The courthouse faced north and had a community well in its front yard. Eventually, a bell was added to the building to summon people to court and to signal emergencies. The bell now resides at the museum. This courthouse served the county from 1842 until 1904 when it was torn down and replaced by a new courthouse. The site in the center of town where the original courthouse stood remained vacant for six years. In 1910, the Confederate monument was placed there. The monument stood in the center of town until 1964 when it was moved to its present location. Behind me is the building housing, central barbershop, and a variety store. The building was built in 1842, and although greatly altered and added to through the years, it is the oldest surviving brick structure in the original town. It was built by L.M. Tuttle as a general store. The building, like most other buildings in town, has housed a large variety of businesses, ranging from McCormick's Jewelry Store to a, a variety of restaurants. It once housed the Charter Oak Hardware Store, named for the old tree. To my right stood the Central Hotel, which was torn down in 1907 and replaced by the Lenore Furniture and Hardware Building, which remains largely unchanged today. Harper's store stood across the street, where the Carter Bank now stands. It developed into Citizens Building and Loan and the Bank of Lenore. The hardware business was purchased by G.L. Bernhardt which later became the Bernhardt Siegel Company after being moved to a new location. Where the city office building now stands stood the Jones House Hotel. It was a log structure. M. V. Moore replaced it in the 1870s with a new brick building. It later became Nelson's store, Union National Bank, First Union National Bank, and now the city office building. In 1910, the building was gutted by fire, raised and rebuilt on the original foundation. The buildings on the west side of North Main Street, above the Central Barbershop, running up to Ash Avenue, have a very complex history. At one time, there were a number of wooden structures lining this side of the street. All of them have been replaced. The next two buildings that are currently occupied by Dewey Keller and Linda Hebel as law offices were built in 1909 by R.P. Matheson. During my time, I like to refer to them as triplet clothing company buildings. The building currently occupied by Harmon's Little Store was built by Mr. Matheson also in 1914 to house the new Star Movie Theater. It later housed a series of food markets. The next building, housing a bail bond company, was erected by W.M. Hollifield as a rental building. Next to it is the building housing J&A General Store. It was erected by H. C. Hamilton for his general store. The next building, housing two law offices, was built by S. W. Hamilton. And finally, D. S. Perry built the building on the corner for his jewelry store. All of these buildings were built in 1895.
most replacing older wooden structures. These buildings housed at one time Crowell's Automotive, the Bluebell Cafe, and the Avon Barbershop, just to name a few. At the Methodist Church's parking lot, Calvin C. Jones built a house in 1843. It later became the home of Dr. A. A. Scroggs. In 1888, it was purchased by James Lee Nelson, who had married Dr. Scroggs' daughter, Emily. The Nelson family lived here until Mrs. Nelson died in 1944. The home was torn down for a Gulf oil station in the early 1950s. The Nelson family also owned the property just above us. They had a building erected here in 1949 to house the A&P grocery store. That building remains today. The building marks the northern limit of the original town. Across the street where there's a vacant lot next to Cornelia is where Hillside Cottage, also known as the Rankin House, stood when it was built in 1843. It has been moved three times. First in 1922 to the rear of the lot facing Mulberry Street. Next in 1987 to the Baptist Church parking lot and now in 2017 to its present location facing Ridge Street. Following the first move, Dr. C. L. Wilson built a rock house for his home and medical office building. It was torn down by the Methodist Church. Where the Baptist Church's chapel now stands stood the home of Will England, built about 1913, which his sister, Maud Pitts, converted into a rooming house. Mr. England is known for his little newspaper, The Hypodermic, a somewhat satirical rag that was published in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s. Next down the street, where the first Baptist church was built in 1923, stood the Lenore Graded School, built in 1904. The school operated until the new Lenore High School building was built on Willow Street. Moving back down North Main Street, we come to two town lots that had been owned by the Ballou family. The Ballou house stood on the northern end where the new portion of the courthouse now stands. This is where the Avon Theater was built in 1933, which is about where the, the right-hand end of the new portion is. The Ballou Store Building, which was destroyed in, the eight, in 1884 by a massive fire, stood where the 1904 courthouse was built. The 1904 courthouse was designed by the firm of Wheeler and Runge of Charlotte. They were responsible for the design of at least a dozen courthouses in North Carolina. The old Ashe County Courthouse, now a museum in Jefferson, is an exact duplicate of ours. In 1928, the 1904 courthouse was completely remodeled altering its appearance and adding a new three-story addition to the rear of the building. Next we come to the Confederate Monument placed here in 1964 after being moved from the center of town. The building on the right that is now a law office was begun in 1875, finished in 1878. It housed the Gene Miller store later became uh, Lee and Robbins. The buildings to the left were uh, W.S. Miller erected them in one section. They became known as the Hedrick Building. Later Duke Power Company once had its office in there among other things. Crossing over the street once called East Main we come to the second, second monument to war soldiers. This one was erected in 1983 through the generosity of Jack Taylor. At this site stood a large wooden building dating from the 1850s 
housing Gustav Westman's store. The building was destroyed in a massive fire of 1892, which almost consumed the whole town. Following the fire, Wade Cloyd built the building on the left side, in the corner. In 1893, the other buildings were built by Lenore Realty and Insurance Company in 1907. At one time, the Waldinch and Bakery of Valdez had a branch store here. Later, Teague Furniture Company operated here. Next down the street is the building erected in 1895 by Mrs. M. E. Hartley, replacing her earlier building and home that was destroyed by the 1892 fire. This building housed a general store operated by Carter B. Harrison. In 1920, the building and the vacant lot behind were purchased by George O. Shakespeare. He built an opera house immediately behind the store in 1921, which would later become the State Theater. The front building housed the Western Auto Company and later a series of shoe companies. The next building, currently housing the Cannon Law Office, was erected in 1911 by Ned Jones as a rental property. That Ned Jones is the same one that we refer to as Ned Jones Hill. It housed a variety of businesses through the years. Next down South Main are two vacant lots. Both lots had buildings on them at one time. First, on the left, was the three-story building built in 1906 by A.W. Dula. Next to it was the two-story commercial bank building erected in 1899. Both buildings were torn down in 1988 after an ice storm collapsed their facades. Next is the building built in 1899 by George W. Henry as a rental building. This building would house J.E. Shell's drugstore, then Ballou's drugstore. In 1936, a major renovation would make the building into Ballou's Arcade. The building currently housing a new dimension is one of the oldest buildings in town. It was built in 1878 by M.E. Shell and has served as the location of numerous businesses through the years. Next we come to a vacant lot and two buildings that were once known as Fraternity Row because they housed in order as we go down the street the Oddfellas, the Knights of the Pythias, and the Masonic Lodge. Each building was built in 1901. The first floor of each building housed a variety of businesses. The first two, the vacant lot and the one beside it, were built by the Shell family, the third building by the Masons. In 1935, the Masonic Lodge purchased the adjoining building, remodeled the facade, and expanded their lodge over the two buildings. The first two were built by the Shell family, the third by the Masons. In 1935, the Masons purchased the adjoining building, remodeled the facade, and expanded their lodge over the two buildings. The missing building housed the Gateway Cafe, which also was a hotel in its early days. It was torn down in 1985. The last building on this block was built by R.G. Courtney in 1895, in which he operated a grocery business. For many years, this was the home office of Caldwell County's many cotton mills, and later the home of Mutual Building and Loan, which then became Mutual Savings and Loan. Crossing over Harper Avenue, we come to the lot where the county jail was built in 1842. The jail was a two-story building with living quarters for the jailer and his family on the first floor and two cells above. That building became obsolete by the turn of the century. It was replaced on the same site by a new structure with 10 cells in 1900, serving the county until 1928, when the courthouse addition was completed, 
which placed the jail on the third floor of the new addition, facing Mulberry Street. The second jail building was torn down and replaced with a filling station. Beside the jail, going up the street, was the house of Dr. J. M. Spainhower, facing Mulberry Street, and his dental office facing South Main. The house was raised to make way for the new Citizens Savings and Loan Building in 1965. The dental office building still exists, but has been moved to property located on Highway 268. At one time in the 1930s, all four corners of the lot currently occupied by SunTrust Bank held filling stations, Gulf, Texaco, Pure, and Sinclair. At this point, we have reached the southern town limit and the end of South Main Street, which was not extended until the 1920s. Crossing over South Main Street, we come to the St. James Episcopal Church. The church has the distinction of having the longest continuous ownership of a lot in the original town. The lot was purchased by Elisha P. Miller, an Episcopalian, in 1841, given to the church soon after, and the first building was erected in 1846. The building has been greatly altered, added to, and reoriented through the years. First it faced Spring Street, which is now Harper Avenue. It now faces College Avenue. Moving up Main Street, we come to a, the municipal parking lot. This is where the town, later City of Lenore's municipal office was located, the fire department and the police department. It stood there until night from 1934 until 1983. At that time, the city's buildings were torn down. At the corner of Maine and Harper stood a building erected in 1911 by H.C. Martin as a rental property. The last owner was American Trade and Loan. The city purchased this building and raised it at the same time that it did its own buildings to create the parking lot. Crossing over Harper Avenue we come to the old Belk Building, which was rebuilt in 1934 following a massive fire which destroyed the original building built in 1928 by the G.L. Bernhardt family. Belk's department store remained here until 1966 when the store moved to West Avenue into a new building, the current county office building. The next three buildings were built by Dr. A.A. A. Kent. The first building, the one on the right, was built in 1894 to house Dr. Kent's medical office and drugstore. To the left and in the middle, he built a rental building in 1898 to house the post office. Finally, in 1899, he built the building on the left to house a grocery store. These buildings have housed a variety of businesses through the years. One of them, of course, was the guarantee store. Next we come to the Bernhardt Siegel Building. It was erected in 1903 by G.L. Bernhardt to house his Bernhardt hardware and furniture business that he had purchased from the Harper family some years before. He had an old house torn down to build his new building. That house had been built by James Harper in 1842 for his nephew, James C. Harper, to live in while he ran the Harper and Waz store on the site. The house would later become the home of Major G.W.F. Harper and his new bride following his return from the war. Okay. They would name the house Hart's Ease. The Harpers lived here until they built their new home on the lot that would later become Major Harper Park. We have come to the end of our tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any, any corrections or additions you would like to add, please give them to me. Anything that you may ha have, questions, let me know and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Thank you very much. This video is dedicated to our Caldwell Heritage Museum curator, Jeff Stepp, who passed away suddenly on Friday, April the 28th, 2017.